my heroes who came in through the, especially Virginia Beach, we came through the snow, right? Of course, there's no snow on the roads anymore, but who cares, right? And stuff. So anyway, I'm glad you're here with us, and welcome to those of you guys watching online, right? Uh, you know, the, I have a firm belief in my heart that God has created each and every one of you with the uniqueness to your life, right? That he has put and placed inside you a destiny, a place that he wants to take you to, right? It's a purpose for your life. And here's the, the problem, though, right? We procrastinate taking our next step and going in that direction. And some of us have a hard time even understanding what does that mean, right? And so I want to talk to you a little bit about that. You know, this series that we have been in, right, it's time. Well, it was designed to help you guys to be able to uh, put away that procrastination, to be able to jump on board and, and to find some of those practical helps that will help you to take that next step to go towards the destiny that God has for you, right? And so I want to encourage you in that. It's kind of what I can hear in my head what Pastor Andy said last week. Sometimes we just need a little beep beep, right, to get us moving along, somebody to kind of help guide us, give us a little push, right, and stuff. So I believe that today is going to be a beep beep message for for many of you, okay? Well, it's my custom. I always like to start and open in prayer. So if you bow your heads right where you're at, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit, which is God's presence, to come even more. Yes. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're here. Yes, Lord God. And I ask that you would just uh, bind anything, Father, not of you in this room, that you would release your spirit into every part, that you would cause the walls of hearts, Father, to be lowered. For you say you know our hair, every hair on our head you're well acquainted with. So every deed and who we are you, are, you know about it. And so Holy Spirit, I ask that you'd come right now and that you would do a work, Father, in the lives and the hearts and minds of Father, of those that would uh, be intended to what your Spirit is saying. Let them, Father, get the deposit and the richness down in their soul that they might be different when they walk out than when they came in. That can only happen with you and in our action with you. So, Father, come and have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, guys. Well, I do want to uh, talk to you a little bit about uh, today about how to make a difference, right? But before I would jump off onto that, I was thinking about our upcoming um, conference, our marriage conference, right, that's coming around the corner. I'm glad some of you are excited, <laughs> right? Well, here you go. I was thinking about it, and then this year I'll be married to Pastor Andy for 33 years. Yay, yay, yay. It's a big deal, right? So, but here's the thing. You know, I didn't get married until I was 29, okay? And so I had my own house. I had my own business. You know, I was well-established. I knew what I wanted. I was fiercely independent. My personality is that way, but my upbringing kind of endorsed that. And so when I was smitten by the beautiful, handsome Andy Mead, right, I was like in a conundrum, what do I do? You know, I went into prayer because I just knew to have a good marriage relationship, I would need to uh, take a, you know, to be able to become interdependent instead of independent. And that was going to cause me to have to, to really change the way I led my life right? And I just knew I couldn't do it by myself, right? I needed the Lord's help. So after a lot of prayer and stuff, I entered into that relationship with him. And if the truth be known, I still have to work on learning to be interdependent with each other, right? With Andy and I, because I want to be independent, go do my own thing. It's hard. It's hard. So when we have something like a marriage conference that's coming up, you know, in February, right? The 25th, 26th, this is a good place to be, it's a good place for me, but also for you guys that are married especially. You know, this is an opportunity for you to work at that one relationship. This is probably the most important relationship you have other than Jesus Christ, 
right? A place for you to come and to, to learn to pull together and what does that look like and how to talk through some of those things that we are really good at scooting by and not paying attention to, right? And so I hope to see you there. It'll be really intense, but it'll be a good intense. It'll be one that you go, oh man, I feel so good, right, when you walk out. So I hope to see you there. All right, guys, uh, Stephen Covey said this. He, uh, he, well, how to make a difference. Yeah, that's not what he said, but he said this. If we keep doing what we've been doing, we're going to keep getting what we, we're getting, right? So if we keep on the same behaviors, they produce the same results. It's basically what's happening here, right? And when I talk to people, often I talk about making a difference or arriving at their destiny, going towards that. And uh, what I see is they have so many dreams, so many hopes, so many things they want, right? A better marriage to be able to get along with their kids better, right? A better career or job. And, and so they have all these high hopes of where they want to go, what they want to do, yet the behaviors that they engage in are down here. And it's like this big continuum, right? And, and they're disconnected. They're disconnected. And so what I want to do today is to talk to you about that continuum. How do you, how do you shorten that? How do you, how do you, uh, you know, change that? And, and what I'm talking about is the condition of the human heart. When you look at Jesus' teaching, when I open it up in the New Testament, and I start to read about Jesus, every time he taught, he wanted to cultivate the heart, right? And so he was always talking about what it could be, the kingdom of God, but then he challenged the people that they would have to change their mindset, their practices, their behaviors, right, and stuff. And so he showed it how, uh, you know, that, that that change was something of the desire of the heart. It wasn't they had to be perfect before they came to him, but their heart attitude had to be one of what I'm going to use the word repentance, right? And I don't normally use that because when I use the word repentance, I know many of you guys, you, you think to yourself, that's like that, that mean old person going, you're a sinner, <laughs> right? Right? We have that thought. But really, the word repentance, all that means is that somebody chooses to change direction. You go the 180, right? You change direction from where you're going because, as Stephen Covey says, we cannot get to where we want to go if we continue to use the same methods and the same ways of living that we have in the past. And so we have to call the audible in our life and change things, right? You have to change things up. Now, Guys, there is this foundational scripture I found today, and I feel like this is what the Holy Spirit wanted me to bring to you, right? Wanted me to talk to you about this, and it's actually, it's a beep, beep message. It's a beep, beep. It's longer, than, you know, than the other scriptures I bring to you, but watch the tone of it. It says this, uh, and this is found in Romans 13, but make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted and taking care of your day-to-day -day obligations, the family, the work, the exercise, the this, the that, right? It says in your day-to-day -day obligations, look what happened, that you lose track of the time, right? We get in this fog. We lose track of the time and get dazed off, uh, doze off, and then we're oblivious to God. This is the natural condition of the human heart that is naturally want to go there. Now watch this. This is our beep beep. The night is about over. Dawn is about to break, up, break in, right? It says, be up and aware to what God is doing. And so it's, this is our beep beep. It says, hey, you're not getting any younger, <laughs> right? Hey, wake up, wake up. And I tell you, this scripture speaks to my soul because when God called me to leave my profession and to leave the things that I knew, right, and to come and to serve him and work in his house, he not only gave me that that was my destiny, that's what I was supposed to be doing, but he gave me the beep beep by saying, hey, time is short. What you do, do it quickly, right? So there's always this urgency with God that we must respond to also. So he asks us to, to be, uh, you know, be up and awake for what God is doing. Then it says God is putting the finishing touches on the salvation he began. Not you, but he began when we first believed. And so he wants us to grow in the relationship we have for him. And then it goes, we can't afford to waste a minute. M must not squander these precious, precious daylight hours in trivial, right, trivia and indulgence. This is so us, right? In sleeping around and debauchery, that's us also. In, in, in bickering and grabbing everything you can get, right? Grabbing it, grabbing it. And he says, get out of bed. 
get dressed, right? It's a very clear voice there. It says, don't loiter or linger, waiting around until uh, the very last minute. He said, don't do that. Don't, don't do that, right? Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day you're going to figure these things out, right? Now, here you go. Here's the solution. This is how we began this journey. Dress yourselves in Christ. He's saying, dress yourselves in Christ and be up and about. So what is this, dress yourself in Christ? Well, all that is is understanding the human heart. It's understanding your heart's condition, right? It's understanding that, that we are lost without God, that because of the sin we were born into and the sin that we participate, that separated us from a holy God, that separates us from our destiny, from being able to understand the purpose for our life right? And so God saw that, and he was not happy with that. And so he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to the earth so that we might be, uh, have a way back. He built us a way back so that we could be with the Father, so that the Father could, could talk to us, and the Father could see us and help us to understand the pathway towards our, our destiny, right? And so we need to know that that's the condition of the heart, and we need to have Jesus Christ. There is no other way, guys, it's go, the, the road goes straight through the Son, Jesus Christ. And when we accept that truth, when we accept it, it's like the clothing I put on, right? It's the clothing we put on. It's Christ that we put on. And that, that's where we all start. The way in is the way on, though, right? So I put Christ on, and then he says to me, now be up and about. Well, what is that about, right? That means that he's got your destiny. He's got your call in your life. He's got the thing he wants to, to depart to you. But it requires you to get up, to have some motion, to go in the direction he wants you to go in. And so we need to be very uh, attentive to what he's telling us. You see, the time is short. And so you need, about, you need to be about figuring out your shape and your purpose in life and, and the gifts and stuff like that he's put inside you. You need to, to start to move towards that. No more procrastinating. I rebuke procrastination in the name of Jesus, right? Because it locks us in and, and paralyzes us from our destiny. And so my thought was to bring to you some principles or things you could do practical. They're stinking well practical, practical here, right? But I want to bring them to you. And I had like 24. I could sit there and write. I was like, oh, I only have time for, for three, really. But I got a fourth in there. <laughs> so today I'm going to give you these four common thoughts that I'm having that helps us to overcome the procrastination in our lives from moving towards the destiny that God has for us, right? So how do we make the most of the time God has given us? The first one, take control of my schedule. You're kidding. The schedule is such a little thing. It's such a little thing, but you know what? If you mismanage it, it has tremendous impact in your life. It's wasting the precious time that you have, and so you need to take uh, authority of it. You need to, to have control over your schedule, okay? You need to not be, oh, I hear that, a victim of your, uh, of your schedule. You need to be a victor, right, in that schedule. Now, the scheduling of your life is important. And I know that people that are free-spirited, you're already going, oh, my gosh, I hate that talk, right? Because you like to just, you know, go off the, the slip of everything. But um, I'm going to call you into 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 some uh, schedule constraints here, right? Now, here's why. Here's why. This idea of your time and how you spend it is so important. I've been walking with the Lord for over 40 years, and what I have noticed is that Satan comes after us in one of two ways. First way is he gives us lots of problems, right, in our health, in our, with our family, in work. So he gives us these problems because he thinks, hmm, if I can get them swatting at the mosquitoes, and they forget the swamp they're in, <laughs> right? So that's the first one. The second thing that Satan loves to do is, man, he likes to make us really busy, right? He throws all these things at you, and here's the, here's the crux of the matter. They're good things, right? They're really good things, <laughs> But we get so bogged down in them, and we are, we're trying to cover all our bases at home and at work and with our health and, and then spiritually, you know, and you're trying to do so much that all of a sudden what happens is that our life gets so complicated, right, that we find ourselves driving down the interstate, going down the interstate at 60, some of us 70, right, and we're, we're speeding down and we're yelling out to God these prayers, God, remember this, God, do this, right? But there's no intimacy, and so we're kind of yelling out what we need. 
And so this is what busyness does. Now, I'm not talking from one that's not uh, acquainted with this because my life is very complicated, very busy. So let me tell you what I, how I see life, right? I see where life is about becoming an orchestra, you know, conductor, right? That's got all those pieces playing, right? All the different instruments and stuff. But my job is to make sure that they have the harmonious melody that will carry them, right? And so as a conductor, I need to make sure that melody exists and it's always constant no matter the highs and the lows or the busyness or the, the not being busy. So what is this melody I'm talking about? Is it not the commandment that God gives us to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, with all your strength, right? With all the breath of our life. You see, that's the melody by which God has caused us to be able to follow after him, right? And so we need to enter into that. We need to know that this is what, what God is looking for us. And you can even read it in the scriptures. You see this um, importance of keeping the main and plain, the keeping the thing that's important, important. Look at this scripture here, one of my favorites. Philippians 3, 12 and 14. It says, uh, not that I have already obtained all this. I have already arrived at my goal, because it's not true, the apostle was saying. But look at this. But I press on to take hold for that which Christ Jesus has taken hold of me. I'm going to back off because here you go. This is important, and you're just getting glazed over. Listen, Apostle Paul is saying, I press on. That means he's working here. Okay, he's working. He says, I press on to take hold of for that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Do you know what he gave up for you? Do you know how, what he went through, right? Because you were that important to him. He gave you his very life, right? And so we need to know that we need to understand and walk in that. And so the Apostle Paul encourages, he says, hey, forget. Forget what is behind you. But look at this. Strain towards what is ahead. Press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called you heavenward, right, in Christ Jesus. And so here you go. We all have busy lives. And, and, and the tyranny of the urgent, it kind of overtakes us. I was thinking about this past week, you know, I was in the morning time trying to have my time with the Lord, and, and uh, my sisters are important to me, and one of my sisters is helping to take care of my 86-year-old mom, you know, to be with her while I'm away on missions for the next couple of weeks. And so I was in my time, a quiet time of prayer, and, and I heard the phone go off. Now, I don't keep the phone around me because I'm not good. <laughs> I'll pick it up and look at it, but... I, and I heard it, but here you go. I give my sisters this special ringtone. So I knew which one it was, and I knew it was the one that my sister was with, uh, with my mom. And so everything inside me wanted to jump up as quickly as I could and run to that and to see what the heck's going on because it's really early in the morning. And then I heard the Holy Spirit say, shh, don't go. Shh, quiet down, you know? And I was like, but, but, no, shh. I was like, okay, Lord. You know, and so I sat with him another 30 minutes, and I listened to what he was telling me and reading his word, right? And you betcha when I got done, I went right over, picked up the phone, and I dialed her, right? And, and what she shared with me, here's the remarkable thing. Do you know what? When I was talking to her, I had such peace and such calm in my heart that even if we were dealing with a calamity situation, I did not feel anything. I was totally at peace. Now, I could bring something to the conversation before I could not, right? And it, it's important that we set up these places and we listen to the Holy Spirit and he'll show us how we can organize our day. And I'm not going into the, what you could do, all the different techniques, because to be honest with you, they're online. <laughs> Just go Google them, right? Or Pastor Andy, he's talked about the full focus planner, Things like that, they can help you get organized. But I don't think it's the technique that I have to share with you. I think it's the, the motivation to go and look, <laughs> right? And stuff. So anyway, I want you to know that it's time. It's time, it's time. It's your time to get control of your schedule. The second thing I want to share with you is to rethink what I've allowed to enter into my mind and my body. This is important. You know, we live in a culture where we're bombarded all the time with all kinds of stuff. And I can tell you the things that are coming at you that you're seeing, the images, that the things you're hearing, right? Even the words that we speak, they're all 
uh, usually counterintuitive to what the word tells us, right? And so we need to rethink what we're listening to, what we're seeing, and even what we're saying. We need to, to line it up with his, his voice. Now, I was thinking about this concept, and I was thinking, hmm, the Olympics start this week. Yay. I love the Olympics. I love to watch the athletes that get out there and, and um, you know, they refine their, their skill sets, right? It's really fun to watch the competition. And uh, so the Winter Olympics, right around the corner. So I was thinking about this, and then I thought about a young lady I know. She's one of the young ladies that was part of our church, a uh, beautiful young lady. She came here I- as a youth, right? And she, then she became a young adult. But she knew that God had gifted her in this area of swimming. And so uh, she was very good at it. And so when she finished through college, she knew that God was calling her perhaps uh, to apply or to go out for the Olympics. So I watched her and her mom, and her mom works for me, okay? So I got a front row seat on this one. And so I was watching, and they sat and they problem solved, and they thought about, oh, we need this coach, right? But the only coach they could have is one that was on the other side of the United States. So I watched them put that thing, whole thing together. It was quite remarkable, right? And the level of sacrifice, you know, this mom took her precious daughter and, and went out to uh, this state and, and, and the coaching uh, system they had out there and, you know, helped her get set up in an apartment and then left her. And so this girl was there not just one year, but a couple of years. And every day she'd get up, ate, swam, you know, had lunch, swam, you know, went home, dinner, swam that night. I mean, just everything. She, her, she trained her body to be a machine, and she was starting to break some of the, the uh, records for swimming, and she was a contender now to be on the Olympic team, which is pretty cool, right? Here you go. That's not the impressive part for me. That is ultra cool. The impressive part for me was watching her mom. Watching her mom. You see, every day I have an opportunity to watch her and to be around her. And I'm going to tell you, every day she, uh, she would come here, she puts in her eight hours, and then she would close up shop, have her dinner, and then go over to another job in the evening, right, in retail. And she would be pushing carts, you know. And then when any work was, uh, came available, she, she sought it out. She said, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go clean, you know, because I can get some more money. And what she was doing is helping to fund her daughter's Uh, endeavors, right? But it doesn't go just with the financial. No, no, no. This woman also, every day I heard her talking to her daughter, and maybe multiple times a day, and she would be encouraging her. You see, she was a dream maker. She would build her daughter up and tell her, you can do this. God has made you for greatness, right? And she would breathe life into her daughter, And she would, whenever something harsh would come, she would be able to take this place and be an encourager in her life, right? And I watched it over the years, and I thought, how remarkable. You see, she wasn't winning a medal, right? She wasn't getting any kind of a recognition for what she's going, you know, what's going to happen here. But I'm going to tell you why she did it. Because, oh, man, she loves her daughter. She loves her daughter, And I got to thinking, if we really love God like that, what would we be willing to sacrifice to get close to him? What would we be able to do with our lives and and put aside rights and and put aside things that that he doesn't say, hey, you don't do this, you don't do that. The daughter never asked the mother to do these things. The mother did it willingly because of the heart. It was her privilege. Is that not what we should have? You see, Father's never going to tell you that you have to do stuff, right? He doesn't. He suggests, he shows you, but he never tells you. It says here in 1 Corinthians, we are allowed to do anything, so they say, and this is true, but not everything is good, right? We are allowed to do anything, but not everything is helpful, And so what I want you to do is call the audible in your life. When you know that you are stepping away from Christ instead of stepping into him, call the audible in your life, right? The Holy Spirit comes and he brings this uh, uh, conviction in the heart. He says, you don't have to do that. That's not good for us. And you know it and you can either listen to it or you can shut it down. It's your choice. It's always been about a choice that he gives us. And so I just got to thinking that it's time. It's your time to start to rethink what you're doing. What are you allowing into your mind? What buttons are you clicking on your computer, right? 
What are you allowing to enter into your body? And so you're, you start to think about these and call the audible and say, you know, that's not bringing me closer to the Lord. And you see, 2022 is the time that you stop procrastinating. You know what to do already. Go and do it, and the Holy Spirit will help you. I promise he'll be here to help you. Now, the other thing I thought it was time that we could uh, look at is being able to organize my finances, to organize them around what God says, which is to be uh, giving, saving, and living, right? To live. So those are the three aspects that God wants us. And I 100% absolutely think I'm supposed to be talking about finances this morning, right? I just do. I think that we should be talking about them because I think that God wants you to be, I hear that, the head and not the tail. He wants you to be a leader in this area, not one who's struggling. And so I want to talk to you about this this, uh, give and save and live. You see, I'm talking about a principle Andy has taught on many times, and I've taught on it. It's called the 10-10-80 plan, right, where we give 10% of what we get away. We give 10% to a savings for another day, and we learn to live off the 80% that comes in, right? So here's how it works. If I get $1,000 in a month, I give away 100 I save 100 and I learn to live on 800 for my clothing, my entertainment, my housing, whatever it is right? I don't go swipe the card and make a big debt here. Oh, next month I'll pick it up. No, no, no. You learn to live in the box, right? You get disciplined. You do that for yourself. This is, this is so important, and I know I start talking about it, and, and people are like, are you sure God wants to talk to you? Yes, because the word says that where your treasure is, your heart is, and you see God's after your heart. He's after your heart, And that's why he speaks about the treasures, the things that you have, your resources. Matter of fact, he gave us this scripture. You don't have it on your outline, but it's up here. It's in Malachi. Malachi 3, it says, bring the full tithe into the storehouse, right? Tithe is 10%. Storehouse is the place that feeds you spiritually, which is church, that there may be food in my house and uh, thereby put me to the test. And so God is saying, hey, test me on this. Test me and see what happens, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven, this is your promise, for you and to pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. And so God is saying, you try me on this one. Watch, you can never outgive me, right? This is so true. You can never outgive God. And why does God want us to be a giver? Because he was a giver. When we were in our dire need, when we had no hope. He gave us Jesus Christ, right? He gave us Jesus to make a way when there was no way. And so as children of the God most high, we need to, in my mind and in your mind, we need to see ourselves as givers like our Father in heaven is a giver, right? And so we need to go there and to do that. Now, just as sure as I'm talking about giving here, I know Satan's at work. I know that, and I bind the enemy in the name of Jesus. Here's the deal. Your, your mind can shift to, hmm, she's the head of the church. Hmm, she's just going to get money for sales. Oh, they mustn't be doing well, right? I mean, this is the lies of Satan, and I want to dispel those because, first of all, and I've said it before, I said it in December when I was talking to you, I think that this church is the most generous church I've ever been a part of. You guys know what it is to give, and you give sacrificially, and you give abundantly, right? And your, your gifts... They're making a difference in the world. I just said this Saturday, just sent the missions team off to Mexico, right? I mean, even with all the snow, <laughs> the leader, she was praying, and God told her, go up to Richmond. You can get, get down there for Richmond. Why? Because he cares about the people down there. That's why. And he wanted to make sure that team goes. And I'll be getting on a plane tomorrow and going down there myself. It's a long journey, and Andy will join me later because he's, Uh, doing some other work in a different state right now. So here's what I want you to know. Here's what, we might go down there, but you know, we can't do that without you. With all of the sacrificing and the giving, part of that is the monies that we level to be able to go down there and help other people. And you know the conference that I'll be doing for pastors and leaders of all the little church colonials all around? Do you know what? That's you guys. 
I can't put you in my back pocket, but here's the deal. Every time I speak hope, every time I say don't give up, you're making an eternal difference. We need you here. They need you in this little town. They need people, need the hope of Christ, and you're answering that call. And I want you to know you're not alone. My whole church is coming with you to help you, and they sent me here to tell you that. You're part of this. It's not something that, that is just done and you, you has no connection. No, no, no. In the book of life, your name is written there and what you're doing. You know, just a couple weeks before that, I sent out to one of our partners, Convoy of Hope, right? I sent out some monies for them. Why? Because of the typhoon that, that, that took place and hit in, you know, in the Philippines and caused so much devastation. You and I can never get there really to help them. But when I send on our gift ahead, you see, it helps so many people that feel like they're abandoned, lonely, and they are frightened. And your giving, your generous giving helps to give them some hope, gives them a cup of cold water, right? Breathes life into lifelessness. I want you to know that your finances are making a difference. I also want you to know that this church, this church that Andy and I have, have built for the, with the Lord, it owes no man anything but its love. It doesn't carry debt. It's not an indebted church at all, right? And, and we did that purposely so that we wouldn't have to owe something other than our love to the community, right? And so you, I'm not up here. I'm not com, uh, compelled to tell you something. Matter of fact, when the pandemic hit, it was rough around here, right? Because it disrupted the pattern of giving for people. And so when the numbers would, would dip down, I'd go, okay, Father, what do you want to do? And I'd be dang on if he doesn't move on people to give more than their tithe to give extra, right? And not only that, here you go. When we were first closed down, I wrote for a grant. I wrote for anything I possibly could to help, right? And, and the grant that I went for was 10000 and And I wrote this in a giving letter that I just sent out. But in there, we got, we got rejected, you know, didn't have it. And so I was like, oh, okay. And then somebody from their office a year and a half later calls me and says, would you like to resubmit? I'm thinking, yeah, I can handle rejection, <laughs> right? I'll, I'll do it again. So I sent it in. And then it shot back, you have uh, been awarded this grant. I'm thinking, oh, well, that's really cool. So I click on it thinking, oh, I'm going to get the 10000 It was $100,000. 100000 given to our church for no other reason than just because, Right? Here's what I want you to hear. Father does not need your money. He doesn't need my money. He wants what the heart represents. He's well able to take care of his own church. Do you see that? But he's, enjoying, he's joined himself in us because he wants our hearts. He wants our hearts. And we need to trust him in that. And this scripture here says, God, uh, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Right? Don't try to do that. Listen. I love this part. Listen for God's voice. Listen for God's voice. Even in what I'm saying, listen to his voice. In everything you do, everywhere you go, he's the one who will keep you on track. Got that? It's his job. Don't assume that you know it all because you know what? We don't. We just don't know it all, right? And so he does want us to get, um, to get some uh, handles on our finances. And so this 10, 10, 80 plan is something to save, you know, the give and the uh, living in that 80% in that, that box, right? He wants our lives to be organized like that. He wants us to have that kind of um, organization to our finances. But let me say this, because I know, and I was sharing, that there are some of you guys here, you're like, oh, I got that. It's easy, sneezy, Right? I've got that 10, 10, 80, but here you go. I also think there are many of you that you got this, but you're in that 80%, and you know you got more than you need. You know you got more money, and so you're looking at, hmm, do I buy another coat? Do I, do I buy a car? Do I buy another boat? You know, what do I do with this money, right? You know, do I put it in my savings and make my savings bigger for retirement? And so you've been thinking it. Well, I want to throw in a thought here. Okay, we have something called the legacy team. The legacy team is a group of people that know that the 80% that God has provided for them is more than they need. And so they strategically meet together to advance what the mission of this church is by their strategic giving, 
right? By their strategic giving. And so your next step, if that's you and I'm talking to you, your next step is to find out about what this legacy team is, right? And Pastor Debbie is the one who helps to do the, the leadership on that, all right? And she's uh, out on missions, but when she gets back, you know, in a couple of weeks, she'll be glad to talk to you. Uh, you can grab me, and I will also tell you more if you need, okay? So it, we need to get, it's time, it's time here to get to this fourth point, <laughs> live uh, life intentionally. That's where I want to go lastly with you. Live life intentionally, right? Guys, live it deliberately. Live it to its fullest, right? And so I want to say this to you to, to get disciplined with your life because I don't think you can live life intentionally if you don't, right? If you're not disciplined. I mean, when I got that call and God said, hey, the time is short, I had to reconfigure what was important in life and let a lot of stuff drop that wasn't, right? And I know for me, being disciplined in my life, I do four things. I used to do three all the time, and I put a fourth in there. The first one was that I make sure that I spend time with the Father every morning, right? Why? Because I can't breathe without him. He's, he's the wind in my sails, right? He, I never feel more loved and appreciated and, and accepted than when I'm with him. And so I make sure that I have my Bible reading and I have time of worship and I do my journaling and I, and I define his voice there, right? And so it's very important that I spend time with God every morning. It doesn't matter if I'm on vacation, I still do it, right? And then the second thing I do is I make sure that I love those that are closest to me. I make sure that I love those who are closest to me. I make sure that you know, for Andy, that he has a wife that's fully devoted, you know, to Jesus and is, is, is surrendered to Christ so I can bring my best self to him, not the self that wants to have hidden agendas, right? And I can only do that when I spend time with the Lord. I can only love him uh, like that and serving him, right? But I make sure that gets on my radar. I make sure that I spend my time with my children. You know, they're all adults now, and, and my family's getting bigger but I love them so very much, and I look for every opportunity to lavishly just give what I can to them or to do for them, to watch, you know, my little granddaughter or, or just to go shopping at the Kmart or the Walmart, right, for them. And so, so I give. I look for opportunities. And then the other person I love so very, very much that's close to me is my mom. And you guys know I've talked about her before. She's 86, right? Well, do you know... I, uh, I, I make sure that my, my life is not too busy for her. And, and when you start getting older, people start slowing down. And so I have to literally pray before I go to sit with her, God, slow me down. Don't let me miss this opportunity, right? And so we create these opportunities that we can love on people. And that's what I've done, the people that are close to me. And then I make sure that every day I'm encouraging to somebody right, that I encourage them. Mostly it's to the staff that work here, right, and uh, I don't have a personal relationship with everybody, so what I do is I get them to give me their prayer request, and I take it to the Lord, and I ask for a word, and then I look for them during the, the day, right, or the week, or whatever, and I look to deposit that encouragement in their lives. Matter of fact, I do that for y'all as well, right, this past Saturday, it was awfully cold, awfully snowy. And, you know, I sat at home and I thought, I don't need to go into the church because there's prayer from 9 to 10 every Saturday. But something inside said, no, it's worth the effort, Sharon, to go. And so I got in my car and I came here and I sat at the, the front row and I worshiped. And then I started praying. And I'm telling you, I can see your faces. Why is that? Because Father God loves you so very much. He can peer right into where you're at. And he wanted somebody to be interceding for you. That the things that trouble you, that the worries that you have, that somebody else is carrying your burden, right? And so he's, he's causing me to see you and to be able to pray for you in the spirit. And even to prepare this message, I said, God, give me something to encourage them. Because it's hard to... To, to break out of procrastination and, and to walk into their destinies. And he gave me this word. He gave it to me. Why? Because I'm special? No, because you are special. And so I look for people to encourage. And then lastly, the one I don't do very well at, he's, he's put on my radar, is I have to learn to take care of Sharon. Right? I 
have to learn to take care of me. And so that's something that's been talked to me about my sleep and my eating and my recreation and making sure that, that uh, I'm taking time out to exercise and to do what's, what's good for my body and, and my emotions and stuff, right? Now, guys, those four I just said to you that I disclosed, those are private. But I show you because that's the life of discipline that I've chosen to live, right? And do you know I crawl in at bed at night and I ask the Father, I'm like, how do we do today, Lord? And I go through my four. And you know, I'd love to say I hit it out of the ballpark all the time, but I don't. I just don't. But you know, when that comes up and I know I missed it, it's okay because I can hear the Holy Spirit whisper to me, it's all right. We'll try again tomorrow, right? He loves us so very much. He has so much mercy for us. But you know, I really think that we need to know that we need to count the cost and live intentionally and and create for ourselves a a discipleship pattern that you can try to live out in your lives, right? Now, I'm thinking about this last scripture because this is the one that my heart is most moved and what I would like to see happen with you. Teach us to number who's teaching us, Holy Spirit, Teach us to number our days and to recognize how few they are. The time is short. What you do, do quickly, right? Help us to spend them as we should. And so there is a book called the Book of Life that God has, and he writes down our name, and then he writes down the things that we do. And he has a destiny, a place for you to arrive at. But unless you call the audible in your life, and you start, you know, start making it your time, your time to get a hold of your schedule, your time to get a hold of your finances and to to begin to monitor and filter out the culture and, and allow Jesus in more. Unless you do that, then you start to waste your time and it's so valuable. You cannot, you cannot any longer afford to do that. And so that's what this prayer is, is praying. And I think it's one that we should all be praying, those of us who know the Lord. Now, I was thinking about this. You know, I'm talking about these things that we can do. And I told you I could, I came up not just with four, I could have 24, right? Right off the top of my head. Here you go. But what really grieved me in my heart was I know I'm talking about finding your purpose and your destiny. And yet I know there are many of you that are far from God. You're far from God. And so I talk about purpose, and you have no idea. I talk about this loving God, and you're like, how how do you get close to him like that? That's all about a relationship. It's all about knowing God. This is so important. Listen, if you feel far from God, hear this. He's calling you home. He's calling you to come to himself. You can't do the things I'm talking about. Well, you can, but it's it's like trying to wrestle them down. I can do this, and you buckle in, and you're trying so hard. But you see, when you fall in love with Jesus Christ, when you have a personal relationship, it's no longer buckling down. I got to get in that prayer time. I got to love people. No, I get to spend time with my Father. I get to love on people, right? Because it's all coming and funneling through the tree of life that out of love. It's out of love for people. So I'm calling to there are people I hear that, there are people in here, you feel far from God. You've let him in. I hear that. God says you let me in a part of your life, right? He goes, but I can't show you your destiny because the other parts have big X's. And you see, he's a gentleman. He doesn't push into those. You have to invite him in. And so today we're going to go in prayer in just a moment. And I'm going to ask you to do something uh, that's going to feel uncomfortable for you. If you're far from God and you want to come in close and you want to open up your whole life and build uh, upon the foundation, right? Because the way in is the way on. Build on this foundation of Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask you in a moment to pray with me. All the heads will be bowed. I'm telling you this before we get there because I'm going to ask you to raise your hand to show me that, that you want to accept Christ today, that you want him to be the leader of your life, the leader, all areas of your life right? And I'm talking to you people that are watching online too. Uh, It's for you too. You see, there's a little button. If you're on a certain platform, you can hit it, right? And it says, I raise my hand for Christ. Here's the deal with the raising the hand. Why? Because God sees spiritually. God sees it. And see, that tells us that's my commitment, Lord. You got my whole life. 
right? And so it's, it's something deeply spiritual, deeply spiritual. Now, I just did a deviation. Why? Because the Father would have none lost. He would have none adrifting. And he would have all of you to find your destiny. But you see, he gives us choice, and we have a choice. And so my, uh, my closing remark to you is, what will you do with what I said today? How will it impact your life? Let's go to the Father now. Bow your heads. Thank you, Father. Yes. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come even more. You're like, you're like that, that gentle rain that comes and, and beats upon the soil of our hearts. And you tenderize us. And you make us, oh, so, so receptive, Lord. So Holy Spirit, I ask that you would continue to do that right now. You've said so much, Father, to us today. Each a seed that needs to be planted in the heart of those that had ears to hear what your spirit was saying. So, Father, would you do that work? And, Lord, I hear you. Those of you that are far from God, those that you feel like you haven't given them your whole life, that you relocate them to, like, oh, yeah, you can be, I hear that, okay. You can be Lord so I don't go to hell. I don't want to burn. That's not smart. But you haven't given them your whole life, your, your family, your career, oh, your entertainment choices, your sexuality. Oh, man, he could be, I could keep rolling. But you kind of cordon those off. So here you go. Today is the day. Don't procrastinate anymore. I want you to raise your hand up and so I can see it. If you want to accept Christ for the first time or you know that your whole life isn't given to him and you want to change that coming into 2022, I want you to do this for me right now. I want you just to lift it up so I can see you. And while you're doing that, mm -hmm, go ahead, just keep it lifted up. The people online, hit that button. God sees it. Actually, God is standing up and he's looking to see what are the people doing. You see, it's always been your choice. Okay. Okay. All right, you put your hands down. All right, now I want you to pray this prayer. Pray it right where you're at. You just, God hears you. Just say, Father God, I'm not where I want to be. I accept your son, Jesus Christ, as my Savior forgiver of my sins <laughs> and I declare today the best way I know how that you may enter every part of my, my, my life every room come into Holy Spirit every part of my life I trust you Okay, there's a word here. The word is, I know it's messy in there. But because you have prayed that prayer, I shall answer it. And where you have been defeated, you will no longer be defeated. I will give you the strength to overcome more than you ever thought, more than you ever dreamed possible, because you've allowed me now to enter that place. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you that you are entering their lives. And, Father God, I thank you. Yes, I hear that. Okay, seal it on their heart now, Father. You've written their name in the book of life. You know their destiny, Lord. And I ask that you would remove any obstacles from them, Father, that they could not uh, go before you at the end of time and say, Father, look what I did. I found my destiny. I fulfilled my purpose in life. And then, Father God, I know your word tells me that we will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Come on in. Come on into my eternity. Father God, that's what my heart cries for. And so, Lord, take this message today. Take this message today. Take your people and do what you will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, guys. Well, we are going to do some transition. Now, I want to speak to those of you that, you know, raised your hand or you were praying with me, right? Whether you're online or you're in the auditorium, you got to tell somebody about it. We have prayer teams. You can come forward and 
and get prayer and talk to somebody. Or we've got connect cards that are out on the uh, chairs for you in the auditorium, and you can fill that out, right? Or you could shoot us off a max, uh, text message and stuff and let us know so that we can jump on board and help you in that decision, all right? And the same with those of you online. You can instant message us, and we'll be glad to re- respond to you. You need to be in a Bible-believing church. That's your next step, okay? And so, guys, as, as I'm, I'm saying that, giving them directions and stuff, um, I'm going to let you also know if this is your time to give of your tithes and offerings and you want to be part of what we're doing here at this church, there is uh, some uh, information coming up that tells you how you can do that. And uh, at your leisure, go ahead and you can do that. All right? And we appreciate that. All right, guys, we well, want you stand up. I'm going to speak one more blessing on you, and we're going to go back in to worship one more song, and then we're going to release you for the day. Okay? I'm biggie with prayer, as you can tell. Because I think it releases something. So Holy Spirit, I ask that you would continue to move upon your people. That you would cause their hearts, Father, not to be darkened, but to be in light. That they would begin to hope and dream again about the destiny by which you have called them. So Father, release. Release your destiny in their lives today. 